All right, in our first tessellation demo video, I'm going to show you how to use a computer to create a tessellation out of a rectangle. Right, in our next video, I'll do the same thing for a triangle, which is a little bit more complicated, but rectangles are the pretty much the easiest shape to tessellate. Uh, so you go to your PowerPoint, right? You can also use like a paint program or a Windows journal or something. Uh, but you go to uh, insert right here, it says shapes, and I want to insert a rectangle. All right, once you have your rectangle, right, it doesn't really matter what size it is. We're going to create, uh, take the fill out of it, right? I don't want any fill. I'm going to change the outline to black. And basically, it's going to look something like that. All right, now tessellation, as we said in, in a previous video, is basically when you have a shape that, that basically covers an entire sheet of paper or a plane or a floor or a wall without any gaps or overlaps. And it's basically the same shape over and over and over again. So rectangles obviously will tessellate on their own, but that's kind of boring, right? You're not going to get a very good grade for that. So let's go into insert and we're going to scribble. Go to this little scribble right here. All right, and then we're just basically going to change one of the sides. So I'm going to put my little pen here on the corner and I'm going to change this side something like this. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm not being too too crazy with this. I don't want to like make it really really jagged. You don't, you would never want to do you know something like this. That's way too much. Right? Because you're going to have to cut this out and trace it a ton of times over a poster. You also don't want to be too extreme at the corners. You don't want to go like straight up at the corners. Right? You want to be really gradual once you get to the corners. Uh, maybe in a, in a subsequent video I might show you how to actually do this so you're not you don't really necessarily have to start on the corners but anyway uh, so we've changed the top side right and here comes the geometry of it we're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste it and then we're gonna translate it it's a translation that's what that's called we're gonna translate it all the way down to the other side all right and that movement right there is the geometry behind it so whatever we do to one side, we have to make sure that we do exactly to the other side. And you notice that the corners line up perfectly. All right, let's do the same thing for left and right. We're going to go to Scribble. And we are going to change this side, you know, using, again, pretty much our imagination, right? You can be really, really creative with this. We're going to copy and paste that, and we're going to move it all the way over here. This move is called a translation. It's basically just a slide. And you're left with that. So left hand side over here equals the right hand side. Top side equals the bottom side. So we've changed our rectangle. Let's get rid of it and see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Oh, you notice that there's a little bit of a gap uh, down here. So I'm going to try to see if I can move this just a tiny little bit. I'm going to move it just a tiny bit so it looks a little bit better. You know, this precision is, is really important. Getting this right is, is critical. So I'm going to make sure that everything's kind of like the way it should be. And it looks like it's not too bad. Not too bad. It's not... Yeah, that'll work. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this out. I'm going to go to my printer and print this out. Turns out this is going to be a really big tessellation. So when you start yours, you probably want to start your tessellation with a rectangle that's like that big, something like that. All right, but for this video, I wanted to make sure it was nice and big so we can see it. So you're going to print this out on a regular piece of paper, and then you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut along this curvy line, being really, really, really careful. All right, precision is key. All right, once you have that cut out, you're going to find a piece of cardstock or like a manila folder or something like that, something that's a little bit heavier, heavier grade paper, and you're going to trace it onto that cardstock and then cut it out again. All right, that final cardstock is called your stencil, and that's what you're going to use to cover your your poster. Your poster has to be at least 18 inches by 24 inches, and the the stencil, the shape, has to cover the entire thing. All right, so it's going to kind of like go go off the edge of the paper, right? If we have, uh, you know, if we have to 
let me show you how, how this kind of works on here. Uh, I'm going to have to zoom out here. But you're basically going to move the figure over so it matches up perfectly. So if I kind of zoom in on that, you can see that it's not exactly perfect. So I need to make sure that I get it. That looks pretty good. So it's perfectly matching up. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing for down here. Right, if I copy and paste that again, which is this process you'll actually do with pencil and paper, but I'm showing you how that actually fits together. So it'll fit nicely right there. If I do it again, over here it's going to again go off the paper, but that's okay. It fits perfectly right in there. All right, another one will go down here, and you'll see that it's all starting to fit together. I'll put another one over here, so it's going literally going off the paper, and you get the point, right? So that's called a tessellation, right? And this poster needs to be at least 18 by 24. All right, and once you have that all set to go, and you've traced it over, and you've done the whole poster, then you want to make sure that it looks really good, right? You might want to outline it with a sharpie or something, and then start thinking to yourself like, what kind of uh, what kind of thing does this look like? Does it look like a person, an animal, you know, any, any sort of like, uh, any sort of interesting design that you can use your imagination. And then you want to color each one in and, uh, and then you're finished. So let's take a look at uh, the steps. All right, I'll leave this up here for a few seconds. You should pause this. These are the 12 steps to creating a tessellation out of a rectangle. In our next video, we'll do the same process, only with a triangle.